Welcome, Army fans. This is Joe Iacono of GoBlackKnights.com, along with a very special guest who I'm super excited to have on this morning, uh, retired Colonel Gary Steele. Let me uh, go into Gary's bio a little bit. As Gary was a uh, 2013 inductee into the Army Sports Hall of Fame uh, for both uh, men's track and field and football. Um, on the gridiron, Steele ranked as Army's first African-American to earn a varsity letter in the sport of football at West Point, garnered three varsity letters in all, second team newspaper enterprise association all-american as a tight end uh Steele was a 17th round draft pick of the detroit lions we'll get into that a little bit it's interesting that the nfl draft used to have that many rounds i think a lot of our younger viewers will be interested in that um uh in 1968 he posted 27 catches for 496 yards and against Penn State, who is nobody's lunch meat, as my dad would say, he shattered the single game record for receiving with uh, 156 yards held by the legendary Bill Carpenter, who, of course, was the lonely end at West Point. Um, Steele closed his career with 66 receptions for 1,111 yards and seven touchdowns and helped Army to a pair of victories over arch rival Navy, most importantly, also earned four varsity letters in track and field and went on to a, a very successful and illustrious military career. Gary, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, but I, I hardly recognize the individual that you just spoke about. But yeah, I guess just, that's me. Just so everyone knows, Gary did not pay me to say all those nice things about him. So <laughs> that, was just, that was just there. So Gary, let's start off by, you know, going into the into the way back time machine and, and talking about your Army football career a little bit and the teams you played for, uh, some of your teammates and brothers, and, and if y'all still stay in touch and how that brotherhood and those friendships have, have kind of grown and, and kind of helped over time. Well, it's been a, uh, a really good um, brotherhood that I'm fortunate enough to become a member of. Uh, it goes all the way from, uh, as a freshman, you know, we couldn't play right. varsity ball back then, freshman through uh, senior year. And uh, if I look back, I go back to uh, Townsend Clark, uh, all American linebacker, yeah. uh, Dave Rivers. Tom Schwartz, Dean Hansen, uh, John Montanero. I mean, those are from the, the guys before me. And then in 68 and 69, John Peduto, Carl Westner, Pat Mente, uh, just tons of guys. And then 69, the uh, my football class, if you will, uh, Kenny Johnson, first team All-American, Steve Lindell, uh, uh, Gary Marshall, split end on the team, Carlo Borski. Uh, Bob Ivany uh, and on and on. Jim McCall, Pete Denker on defense. Uh, and then with the class of 70, the guys, uh, that class, uh, Lynn Moore, Paul McDowell, uh, among others. There's just so many, so many guys. And, and it's being a part of that fraternity or brotherhood is really super. Uh, every summer they have a, a golf outing at West Point. Uh I don't golf because I'm terrible, uh, <laughs> but also because it's uh, if you're golfing, you're with your foursome and you don't get the, a chance to really mix during a, an entire day with everybody else. So I hang out back in the uh, clubhouse and, and as folks come through, you just sit and visit and it's really a great opportunity. Um, I keep in touch with, uh, I should turn that around and say, Folks keep in touch with me. I'm the world's worst communicator. <laughs> but uh, uh, Lindell, uh, O'Toole, uh, Johnson, uh, Doug Jeffrey, uh, Steve Yarnell, Tom Wheelock, Pete Danker, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Bob Ivany was an offensive tackle. He lined up next to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, we Some great things. It's just I'm very glad. Uh, to be a part of that brotherhood. It's, uh, for me, it's like uh, being a fr in a fraternity, one of those Greek name things. Yeah. And uh, our Greek, uh, our Greek is USMA. Uh, and um, of course, the non-footballers, my roommates from the, you know, from the time I was at the academy, et cetera. It's just wonderful. 
Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Oh, Joe. absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I feel the same way about my classmates and the guys on the football team. I roomed with a linebacker for two years who actually even like dated my sister for a little while. So uh, mm-hmm. very, very close with, with all my classmates and everybody on the team. Uh, my sister will probably punch me for saying that on the air, but oh, well, <laughs> I don't want to be the first time. <laughs> so, uh, no, you know, it's funny. I actually recognize some of the names you went through. I, th- I think I recognize three or four of those guys. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some great teams back in those days at Army. And it, it really is, you know, every school in the country now, they almost use it as a cliche. They talk about the brotherhood. But I feel like at West Point, it actually is a brotherhood with your with your teammates. And because you, you serve with each other throughout your career, like you said, you keep in touch. Uh, I actually play golf and am terrible, so don't worry about that. <laughs> so it's, it's all good. But uh, um, now you had two victories over the uh, the other academy from Maryland at your time at West Point, and uh, yes. that's great. So uh, give the fans a quick little recap of those two games. Mm, there were two Ws, two wins. <laughs> you realize, of course, that that's 50. 50- the odd years ago so it's a long yeah long so it's ago. so it's it but, doesn't have to be super detailed so as much yeah, as you well, can remember is awesome <laughs> yeah in 66 we won uh, and the thing about our time as we played i think it was called jfk stadium uh yeah. it was down down near the uh, the waterfront and i believe the stadium held uh, 102 103,000 uh fans and all three games that I was fortunate enough to play in, the stadium was packed, standing wow. room only. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, but to play with uh, uh, Navy, against Navy, uh, was uh, a real highlight. The uh, month before the Navy game, although we had a couple of games before during that month, uh, the month before was just, you, you get so pumped, uh, unbelievably pumped. Um, that was a, a good game, a good win. I can't remember the score, honestly, uh, in 66, but we did win. And that was Coach Tom Cahill's okay. uh, first year. And uh, that was a great victory for the team and, and, and for him. Um, in 68, uh, we, we beat them. Uh, and the thing I remember about that game, I, I must say, in the 67 game, uh, we were driving for a victory in the fourth quarter. And our fullback, Charlie Jarvis, one of the greatest running backs and athletes yep. that I've ever known in my Very life. Very familiar with yeah, that name. Yeah. Uh, there was a fumble right near the goal line. And Navy Navy won. And there was a lot of, oh, my gosh, you know how thick we didn't have – FaceTime and Instagram, etc. Right. But there was a lot of crap that was thrown uh, following that game. And uh, I can tell you that in senior year, uh, Charlie never fumbled again. Wow. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 21-14. I believe Charlie, he may have scored all three touchdowns. So that's a, in Stuart Scott parlance, that's a booyah. Oh yeah, uh, back, uh, <laughs> that's back a big booyah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, just I, I should say this: uh, the game that we lost uh, junior year, uh, everybody looks at what happened at the end of the game. But uh, early in the game, there was a pass that was thrown to me, which I didn't see. I turned and boom, the ball was there, and the ball actually deflected off of my hands up in the air. And the defensive back for Navy, of course, had a vision looking at me. And he, you know, recovered the uh, ball and they went in and scored. The score, uh, final score of the game was 19 to 14. Mm. And uh, I look at that play as the play that uh, really made a difference in the game. Though it was a tough game. It, it's, it's always, always, always tough against Navy. And I just, remember you know hyperventilating uh getting ready for the game super and then to be in that stadium there was a wide track around the football field uh to be in that stadium with over a hundred thousand people in the stands is unreal then i recall 
after the the last game in 68 that we won, uh, just standing and looking and, you know, drinking in uh, the visual, uh, which I still have today, because, of course, the cannons fire and everybody's screaming and yelling. But I knew that I wasn't ever going to play football again. Mm. And uh, so for me, it was I, I wanted to extend myself a little bit more for every play, for everything, you know, because it was the last time and it was for my brothers. It was for the Army team. That sounds a little sappy. No, a little it's, sappy, but that's that's what it was for that's me. That's consistent with everything I hear from every player, whether they played, you know, back in your day or in the in the eighties or nineties or or even today. It's it's a very consistent mm -hmm. message across the board uh, about right. that game and and you know the finality of playing your last game with with your brothers is is something unique. And and like you mentioned, you know that game it's it's almost always close. It's almost always a one score game. Um, because the teams are so evenly matched and it always comes down to three or four key plays. Um, it just seems like, you know, people remember the big play at the end of the game. You know, I think of, yeah. I, I don't, I don't feel no offense. I don't feel sorry for Navy kids, but I feel, but last year's game when, when they're running back at Todd Hall fumbled in overtime and he oh. was just distraught and heartbroken about that. Well, if he doesn't have the 77 yard run, earlier in the game, they don't even get to overtime. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a similar story to what you told about the, mm. the tip ball interception versus Charlie Jarvis's fumble late. People tend to not remember the parts earlier in the game that led to those key plays late in the game. Um, you know, and thankfully last year, Quinn Moretzky, our kicker had the great two field goals at the end of regulation and in overtime to win them. Mm -hmm. so that was super helpful for army. Um, you know, uh, kind of taking a diversion, but, but something else around your, your career as a tight end, um, your big game against Penn state of all yes. teams, uh, who was a powerhouse back then, just like they are now, um, right. you broke Bill Carpenter's receiving record. Uh, was that, did you know, and you may or may not remember this, forgive me for asking, but I'm going to ask anyway, <laughs> Did you know going into the game, like they were that that Coach Cahill had, had planned on and featuring you, and you were going to have a big game, or is it something that kind of developed throughout the course of the game? I think it was something that developed during the game. There wasn't, you know, I probably would have really played poorly if if they told me, okay, we're going to feature you. Uh, but no, it, it just was. Uh, what's the word we use today? It was organic uh, to the game. Uh, it just evolved that way. And uh, another question that you, you hear folks asked on, on TV is, you know, did you know that you caught this many or what? No, I know that we lost. Right. Uh, it was 28-24. Uh, and uh, we had a couple of boo-boos early in the game, uh, but we came back uh, very strong and uh, almost beat. They were in the top, I think they were in the top, five in the nation uh, that year. Uh, it was a, a great game up in Happy Valley. Uh, one thing that I remember about the game is that the, well, two things, if, if we have time. Here. Yeah, we have plenty. Uh, um, one was at the end of the game, uh, Coach Joe Paterno came over to me and uh, shook my hand, told me what a great game. Uh, when I was in high school, being from Pennsylvania, right? Uh, Joe Pa, Joe Paterno was the coach from Penn State that recruited me to go there. Oh wow, and, you were recruited uh, to Penn State. That's awesome. Yes, I, I had I had everything. I had the papers. I had my dormitory assignment, and then uh, you know a little angel and in, intervened and said that I needed to go to West Point. <laughs> uh, and then uh, so many years later. Our daughter went to Indiana University, and Indiana played Penn State, and Mona and I were at the game. And uh, after the game, uh, Sage, who was an intern in the athletic director's office, uh, she got a, a meeting between me and uh, – with me and Coach Cahill. Oh, wow. Uh, no, Coach Cahill. I'm sorry, uh, Coach Paterno. Coach Paterno. And uh, that, was, that was wonderful. I have a picture of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, shaking hands with him after the game. 
um, you know, and he remembered me and he, he said, oh, boy, you must be a general by now. <laughs> no, I, was a, I, I was a civilian by that time. Right. <laughs> but it was uh, really great to, uh, to reconnect uh, with him. It was, uh, you know, absolutely super. Really yeah, super. I mean, growing up in the 70s and 80s in New Jersey, I was about probably two, two and a half hours from Happy Valley. And Joe Pa's just a legend in that area of the country, mm -hmm. especially back in those days. So I, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. Uh, sure. You know, and uh, so, Gary, we know you've been, you know, following the Ar Army program pretty closely since you graduated. Um, you know, there's been some good years, some bad years, obviously. Um you know, Coach Munkins kind of brought in a renaissance of Army football. And, you know, maybe we're not as great as you guys were back in the, the late 60s, early 70s. But when you consider all the obstacles that that him, him and his coaching staff have to face these days with NIL and transfer portal and everything else going on in college football, uh, the Army team has been super competitive the last 10 years. Um, hmm. Can you talk about the job Coach Munkin and his staff have done over the – kind of last 10 years and kind of what you think of where the program is now and, and the state of the program. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is public, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll no, I, 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 I had the opportunity to meet coach Monk and right after he uh, signed on at West Point, it was just a brief meeting up in his, in, in his office. And I met him uh, and I would spent maybe 10 minutes with him. It was it was by happenstance. Uh, one of your classmates set the, the thing up, Gaylord Green. Okay. Uh, he set up a, a quick meet with the coach. And the, the thing that I came away from that meeting with was, whoa, he is intense. <laughs> and there, there's, there's something in his eyes. And I think, you know, that certainly is needed. And he has passed that on to the Corps cadets and to the Army football players, this thing about intensity. Uh, I think uh, he and the Academy, they've done an incredible job over the last 10 years. I know it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Um, me, I had the opportunity to speak to a team after a game, I think it was the last year or the year before, after a game and, and we won. And uh, uh, the one thing I said in the group was, uh, you know, coach, I, I was really glad to see you as an old receiver, throw the ball a little bit more. And uh, of course, uh, yuck, yuck from the, the cadets. Uh, and then coach says, I was angry that we threw that we had to throw, throw it, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, as an, as an old receiver, I like to see the ball in the air and uh, you know we're doing that uh, a little bit more this year more than the last uh, nine years uh, I think he's done a great job the intensity uh, the accountability accountability is really key and the, and the piece about if you will being a part of something greater than yourself um, you know the fact that I still am uh, physically, literally physically connected uh, with my quarterback and my uh, partner wide receiver from 1968 speaks volumes about the team aspect of it. I think he's done a great job. Um, personally, I'd like, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if we could recruit a, a six foot two, six foot three quarterback? It runs about a four or five. I've got an arm like Joe Flacco, you yeah. know, because I think we've got some receivers. But we'll see how it goes. I, um, Army, Army is going to continue to do well, I think, because of, uh, one, the importance of the Army-Navy game. Yep. Uh, and, and the fact that we're playing all over the country and people are being exposed to West Point, the academy, and uh, Army football like never before. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, Gary, you read my mind because you answered 
the next question I was going to ask <laughs> you, um, which is, as a former receiver, how excited are you to see RV throw the ball a little more this year with Drew Thatcher's new offense, um, right? They're still primarily a running team against Coastal mm-hmm. Carolina and Air Force. They hardly threw the ball at all, but uh, right. for the most part throughout the season, they've been throwing the ball a little more. And I think part of that has to do with the quarterback, Bryson Daly's skill set. He's a much better option quarterback than he is a passer, to be honest. Um, but, uh, you know, like you said, I think with this offense, if they could recruit a dual threat quarterback who's big and can run the ball a little bit, um, I think you might see him put the ball up a little more even, which would be exciting. And I kind of in my pregame analysis uh, that I wrote uh, on GBK the other night for my um, kind of scouting article that I do called Behind Enemy Lines, where I predict the game. I think if, you know, if Army can, and this is always the case in the Army Navy Navy game, if they can complete a couple of big passes just to loosen the Navy defense up a little bit, you know, because I, I think Coach Newberry and Navy is going to probably put eight or nine guys in the box and dare Army to throw the football. Um, so I think if they can complete a couple of big passes, that's really going to loosen things up for the running game. And then, uh, you know, unusual this year, uh, brought it up in my conversation with Alex Ackerman last night, Army actually has a good size advantage over Navy in the trenches this year. Um, so really? that's that's something unique kind of that I think we could take advantage of if we can loosen mm-hmm. up their defense a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, well, I, love to, I love to see the ball in the air, obviously. Yeah. Uh, even though I, <laughs> I can't catch it. <laughs> I love to see the ball in the air. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really exciting. And the, the possibility of that happening is, you know, I, that, that's really fantastic for me. But I'll tell you what, uh, if we can if we can run every play and not throw a pass and win, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't have to be pretty. I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty any day. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. So talk a little bit, Gary, last question. Talk a little bit about this week's game. And, um, you know, if you want to give us a prediction, go ahead. Uh, kind of how do you see things going against Navy this weekend? Well, um, it's easy. The prediction. <laughs> I can't. It's the easiest you know. question when I'm talking to grads. So. <laughs> right, right. I can't give you numbers, but I, I really see us uh, defeating the squids, squashing the swabbies or, you know, whatever <laughs> you want to use. Eating some calamari. Uh, uh, love calamari. Right. Um, uh, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game. And and, and I think one of the, the greatest challenges will be ball security. You know, got to gotta hold on to the ball. Can't, one, throw an interception. Two, send a quarterback exchange. And we just can't fumble. And we just got to hit the heck out of them. Um, uh, both uh, both academy student groups will be there, so that'll be uh, interesting. But I, I really I really do believe that, uh, that, that Army's got the better team. And, uh, I mean, we know that. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, th- I think Army will win. I really do. I, I believe in my heart. And I, I'll tell you, it's, it's something, although it's been a year or two since I put on a helmet, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, towards noon, I will have butterflies in my stomach. Every year, you know, I get butterflies in my stomach. Okay. But it's like I'm playing. Right. <laughs> uh, and and that's, that's, that's a, it's a great feeling. And I start getting a little tight. Flip and, and my wife, <laughs> she goes, you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Game's on in about an hour or so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you, get, you get ready to play. Exactly. <laughs> you never never lose that competitive fire, do you? <laughs> no. No, yep. no, no. And we've got uh, uh, some family members and some close friends who uh, went to the dark side for reasons unknown to me. <laughs> um and so there's a little banter back and forth, Good. you know, about who's who's going to win and how bad it's going to be and how much beer we're going to consume. <laughs> I know. I uh, 
it's it's funny. I really I really don't drink much anymore at all. But when uh, if, if Army beats Air Force and Navy, I allow myself to have one beer after the game. So. Mm -hmm. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, uh, thank you very much, Gary. Um, you, you've been a, a great guest, really gracious. We really appreciate your time. Um, Army fans, this is the last uh, last interview of the week for us. Uh, there's a lot of good content out there on goblacknights.com, so check it out. And go Army, beat Navy.